about once to twice a year, I feel like there's a lot of headlines all about coral reefs and the future of them and why they're in danger and why they're so important and what we're gonna lose if we lose them and how to help them. But taking a step back, what even is a coral? What is a coral reef? Why are they so important and how can we help save them? Gonna be answering all of those questions in today's video, so let's get started. <laughs> Corals, while they may look like rocks or maybe even plants, are actually animals. And they belong to the phylum Cnidaria, which is the same phylum that contains sea anemones and jellyfish. They are all united by the fact they have what are called nematocysts or stinging cells. So just like a jellyfish can sting you, corals also have tiny little stinging cells as well. What you see in a coral reef is not actually a singular coral, um, or a polyp as one coral animal is known, but a colony of polyps all living together. And they form coral reefs through a process called budding, which is a form of asexual re uh, reproduction where little pieces of new corals come off and form genetically identical polyps. Ever wanted to be surrounded by you and 20 million of other copies of you? In fact, there are about a thousand coral polyps in one square foot of coral reef, which is crazy. And a lot of the corals you'll see in a coral reef are made up of the kind of hard or stony corals, which actually make a calcium-based skeleton where they get that calcium from the surrounding seawater. They make these skeletons, they build them up, and it takes thousands of years for them to occur. There are also corals that are made from soft body corals that don't make a skeleton or even corals that live way deep down in the ocean. In addition to just having a coral polyp, corals also are in a symbiotic relationship with something called zooxanthellae, which is a very fun word to say, not a super fun word to spell. And zooxanthellae are a type of phytoplankton that are just like other phytoplankton, they take energy from the sun and turn it into food. So xanthelli live within the coral polyps, provide them with food, and the corals provide them with some nutrients and a safe living space. So a wonderful symbiotic relationship. Those xanthelli also provide vibrant colors to coral reefs that you see when you take a dive into one. Why do we even care about coral reefs to begin with? So coral reefs actually provide a lot of what are called ecosystem services. They're incredibly biodiverse habitats, which means a bunch of species of plants and animals live in them. In fact, scientists still estimate that there could be as many as like a million undiscovered species within coral reefs. Some of those species and a lot of drug development and pharmaceutical development is actually based in compounds found in coral reefs, providing, you know, great drugs for us that could be used to cure a lot of ailments. In addition, other natural resources or natural products can be inspired or based on things found in coral reefs. They also provide shoreline protection against floods, storms, and wave action, um, and erosion helping protect a lot of people's lives and preventing even more damage if another flood or storm were to come through. They serve as very crucial foundational pieces to uh, fisheries because many fish that are commercially fished have at least part or all of their life cycle take place in a coral reef as well as provide a lot of benefits for ecotourism um, which is a very great boon to small local economies and oh, actually a recent study I just found estimated that from 2008 to 2012 in the Asia Pacific region that coral tourism was responsible for 19.5 billion dollars on average. So that is a lot of money just coming from people coming to see the coral reefs and a lot of people build their livelihoods around it. So corals form so many important ecosystems or perform so many important ecosystem services for us that help protect us from drugs to literally protecting land we live on if you live by the shoreline. So what is threatening coral reefs? Well, there's two different main causes that are threatening coral reefs. So one, there are a lot of natural causes that can cause a threat to coral reefs, such as the waves and coasts and storms and floods can actually break the coral reefs while they're protecting us. There's also predation. They could be preyed on anything from, uh, predated on from anything from snails to sea stars, to crabs, to barnacles. Um, to even other fish. Um, and you also have just natural variations in ocean temperatures or ocean acidification can cause what is known as coral bleaching, where the zooxanthellae actually just get too stressed out and up and leave the corals, resulting in a bleach dead appearance. Um, and if the ocean gets too acidified, it actually will help start to dissolve their calcium skeletons because calcium dissolves in acid. 
There's also a lot of human effects to coral reefs, um, such as making ocean warming and ocean acidification worse, causing those zooxanthellae to stress out and causing bleaching effects. There's also pollution that can cause the zooxanthellae to be stressed or to cause the coral to die, as long, along as destructive fishing practices like blast fishing and deep water trawling that scrape and destroy coral reefs, and even mining coral reefs for different materials that just destroys them. So all that's super great stuff, but there are a lot of people trying out there to go and help the coral reefs, um, such as like NOAA and NASA apply a lot of satellite images to image the coral reefs from up in space. Um, there are people working on coral gardening, which is actually growing little pieces of coral and restoring them back into coral reefs and trying to study more of like species of coral that are resistant to warming temperatures or can live better in warmer temperatures and restore the coral reefs with a hardier coral that can stand up to environmental pressures. But of course, we would be most hopeful if we could just go ahead and reduce a lot of the impact we're having on the climate to prevent those changes in the first place rather than mitigating them now that they're happening. But it's a great thing that people are trying to mitigate them because if we lose the coral reefs, we lose all of those amazing ecosystem services that I talked about earlier. So there is still hope for the coral reefs. We are learning a lot more and continue to learn more each day about how we can help them, which is amazing because they do provide so many amazing things to us. I hope you enjoyed learning just a little bit more about coral reefs. Um, and today's fun fact that we're gonna rate in the comments on a scale of one to 10 is that coral reefs take an estimated 5,000 to 10,000 years to form. So the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, been around for thousands and thousands of years for us to enjoy it today. So please be sure to rate that fun fact in the comments below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, tell all your friends about it, um, follow me on Instagram, I post on Tuesdays and Fridays, and keep it sciencey!